Master and Master Andy saved the day. Okay, uh, first I want to welcome everybody, and uh, we always begin by thanking uh, Ava Durga so much for hosting us and for taking time out of her uh, week twice a month to uh, stay and sit through the, the presentation and to record the presentation. Uh, just a note to everybody, since I seem to have left it on the screen. Oh yeah, it is at the bottom. All sessions are recorded for future reference. Um, just want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, and I want to, and we always start with a minute or two uh, to allow anybody who wishes to speak, if they have an, an urgent issue or an issue they want to bring up to the rest of the people in the room. Or if, anything wonderful. Or happening. anything wonderful that's happening in your life. And uh, Jen is sitting over here, Master's in the chair, out of sight, waving um, and uh, chortling. So if anybody has anything they want to say, I'll be quiet. Just raise your hand as usual. Uh, and Sue is in now. Well, she's, she's just trying. She's getting in. So if anyone has a question, I'll wait just a few seconds. If you don't raise your hand pretty quickly, we'll continue, though. Nothing. Hearing nothing. I will introduce Master Andy, and uh, Slave Sue is also online, and Andy is quite obviously sitting next to me, and Sue quite obviously isn't. She is in Ottawa uh, at home. Andy works in San Antonio uh, some number of weeks out of the year, and uh, this is where it's just happened very fortunately that this is a week when he's in San Antonio and could drive up to us in Austin and uh, have dinner and come join us for the presentation. And so he and uh, Sue are going to be speaking about navigating emotionally terminal, turbulent. Tur turbulent, excuse me, emotionally turbulent communications. And with that, and uh, as I think I've said, I've, oh, I've got Mass Ottawa and Ottawa Mass backwards. It's actually Mass Ottawa and Master Andy and Sue are chapter presidents. So and chapter also directors, yes. Chapter directors and also the uh, Canadian Regional Rep for Mass. Canadian Regional Rep for Mass. And there you go, Master Andy, it's over to you. Okay, well, I'm going to stall for a minute or two while Sue gets online here. She's connected visually, but uh, getting her voice connected. And it may be a little challenging. This is a presentation or that we we do together and doing it with us both in different rooms on the other side of the other sides of the country could be really interesting. So we may speak over each other a little bit. We hope not. Um, and we do. It's, no, there you go. Uh, Hello, Sue. Welcome. Hi. Sorry, it, um, the computer doesn't like me. Oh, we had a problem like that earlier in the evening. Yeah. But I just left, and they solved it. <laughs> well, you have my tech support with you. <laughs> uh, and he was extremely helpful. We wouldn't be here without him. <laughs> so I was just explaining that uh, the topic of tonight is a workshop that we do, other than we don't want to really do this in a workshop format. We want this to be interactive. We want to, so we'll we'll bring up points and op op leave it open for discussion if people want to chime in on these points. Uh, it will be a little interesting. Uh, with Sue and I being not in the same room and on different ends of mics. So uh, I apologize if we do speak over each other about points at a different time. You can use the old amateur radio thing. Uh, <laughs> sign off and say over. Over. <laughs> A little light and still the damage. Yeah. <laughs> there was a birthday book that said something about turning seven. Mm. Just <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not that old yet. <laughs> um, we're not so bringing up the, the topic, birthday book. Uh, that is that we're talking about is navigating emotional turbulent communication. It's we. Um, it it's something that we've been through a number of times. That probably a lot of people in relationships have. And we've, uh, Sue and I have been in a relationship for 10 years now and have had our emotionally turbulent communications and struggled to break out of them a few times. And we're getting, we've got a lot better and have a lot less of them. Um, so this is based on 
our experience and our research and uh, the, it's the way we explain it to people. Um, so the the first thing is what are uh, is mostly turbulent communications and what we talk about is loaded conversations. Uh, so a loaded conversation is uh, there's a number of different opinions as to what loaded conversations are um, that come out with uh, that kind of are at odds with each other. Uh, but a lot of it is it's a most it's it's very emotional. Um, emotions are high, and there's something at risk. You know, so at we least for one party, not just for well, sometimes only for one party, mm -hmm. but that person for at least for one party. Mm -hmm. So who may not reveal it? Who may not reveal it? To them, there's something at risk, mm -hmm. and so they're that's why they're emotional. That's why they're um, not um, not willing to let go, and they're gonna they're gonna dig their heels in, and they're just gonna go right at it, or they're gonna break down and cry and and be so emotional that be out of control. In my experience, uh, some of that is that they're not re they're not willing to reveal, or they may not quite fully understand. The underlying issue that's causing the loading that's giving the turmoil of the conversation. And we'll, and we'll get to that kind of point a little later, but the idea is what is a loaded, first of all, what is a loaded conversation? And first of all, some, we have some, somebody has something at risk. Okay, well, sure. yes. Right, exactly. And, 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 and that causes their emotions to, they go into, you know, you go into fight or flight type activities exactly. or things like that. And, um, and do you want to take it a little bit from there, Sue? Or can you add any more sure, points? Sure, sure. Um, oh, it's all if echoey. You know, cool. So the concept of loaded conversations or that kind of further to what you're saying, sir, is that uh, like a loaded conversation is one where logic has gone out the window and there's a perceived threat in the conversation. So one of the people feels threatened in some way, somehow, um, and it's not necessarily a real threat, um, but as an example from our relationship, uh, conversations are going along just fine and we're arguing over the dishes. And all of a sudden, Andy says to me, that's enough, it's over, I'm done. And in that moment, I feel incredibly threatened. And the perception is the relationship's over. That's not the reality, Andy's just saying the conversation is over. So in that moment, it goes from an argument to a loaded conversation because I'm now not present. And that's where we kind of move into polyamory with you, your partner, and crazy, and we're going to give credit to Raven Kildera for that. Um, and you don't want to be polyamorous with crazy, with crazy being in control. Uh, and so that's what happens in loaded conversations. Oh, we got we got Bob. Bob's got his notebook nope. out. That was good. That was good. Okay, so you get uh, you get emotional uh, explosion triggers not there uh, triggers uh, uh, illogic and inability to engage uh, the other person. Um, uh, you'd have trouble separating out uh, your the way you took it and the way they intended it. So you go into your own loop. Well. And well, that's... that in about three sentences is our total workshop. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's right. but, but it makes a nice note. But basically, where you go from there is you get into the science of emotions and, and the science of how these conversations go so wonky so quickly. And it's because of our imagination, basically. So in that moment, if we go back to that example, when I'm standing there with rubber gloves on and terrified that Andy's about to leave me because I'm not washing the dishes correctly, um, 
it's my imagination has gone to a place that tells my brain that this is a reality. It's the same as conjuring up an image of a lion. When you do that, your brain doesn't know the difference between actually seeing a lion and you've imagined it because our imagination is that vivid. So physiologically, we go into fight or flight. And at that time is when your blood leaves your brain because you don't really need to think when you're about to fight somebody or run away. You need blood to the extremities. You need your muscles to be ready and that kind of stuff. So your brain starts to shut down at that point. You wanna jump in, sir? Yeah, so actually, uh, if I could add, my sense is that, um, so what I've written down is person, uh, person A says X, person B takes X, as uh, elephant instead of X and reacts to it, person B is now engaged with their own baggage. Then I would pick up what you said. You then go into flight or fright, um, fight, fight or flight, and the brain uh, starts to, um, yeah, shut down. And well, and this becomes, this starts to actually become a, a physical reaction. Your body will actually Physiological reaction. will actually phys physically react to this flight or fight. That you've, crea that you've created, created by your reaction of elephant. Yeah, and cool. so now That's your cool. body is going to make it more difficult for you to engage in the conversation sure. Good stuff. because your body is going to prepare for the fight or flight. And, and the other person is standing there saying, huh? Exactly. Yeah. It's, so you're, you're, you said something, you've got a, and, and then what ends up happening is you get a, you've got a reaction from this person that you didn't expect. And if things get really bad, you react. Oh, sure. And so now you're both emotional. Reacting to different things. You're reacting to different things. And, but it's, and it moves into, the phys and and getting you getting somebody somebody being logical not that logic helps because that's the other thing is speaking logic at this point in time <laughs> to the other person yeah I know this is <laughs> absolutely useless yeah yeah what I used to, what I used to say to say Mindy is I know you've said something but the way you said it makes no sense to me so again using it. no speaking logic to uh, to me when I'm in crisis mode. Um, does not help me not be in crazy mode. It makes it worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it it conveys that maybe you don't understand. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. now it's you're pointing out that I'm in crazy mode. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, that's why we run into trouble. But so the the thing is becomes um, so you get a, you start getting perceptions of fear mm -hmm. um, and as Sue said, you know this. Me saying that I'm I'm done with the conversation gives her a fear that the relationship's over. Mm -hmm. We we actually had exactly this situation because I I would say I am it's over. Yes. And he would think that that meant the relationship was over. Left. And what I meant I was what is happening right now is never going to happen again. It is not what she over. Said. Right. She said yes. it's over. Right. So as far as you were concerned, the relationship. That's what I understood. Right. You misinterpret you know, um, so, but that creates your own emotions, sure, and you react based on your emotions. She was astonished that I walked up, and so uh, it and getting so getting out of that situation. And there's once you had made the decision that you were going to leave, I thought I was being told to leave, right? But so then you took action on that, sure. And even if she decided, she that, felt I'd abandoned her and walked out of the relationship. Yeah. And so it, you create a spiral. Yeah, right. oh yeah. yeah. It was pretty grim. My demons is demon. My demons is demons. <laughs> it's really right. control. Very, very bad. Right. Um, and, and, oh, and that's the whole thing, um, how these loaded conversations um, really, really explode really, really quickly is 
as you start to speak with a certain amount of urgency in your voice and desperation or fear or you raise your voice, the other person naturally feels threatened as well because they don't understand what's gone wrong. And so it hits their insecurity buttons and you then have a situation where neither of you are in a, in a place of pure logic and it's emotional. Um, and that's where it kind of our technique of like the ICU comes in of how do you stop that and, and that's what our workshop is primarily about. It's not so much about the person who's in that spiral initially but the other person who's standing there going, I don't get it, I just ended this conversation, I thought it was a good thing to, you know, now you're walking out the door. That's the person that we not so much care about, but that's the person who's still in control. And they're the person that needs to go through some steps to get this back in control so that it doesn't spiral out of, into their own um, turmoil as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And we might have skipped over, and that, this is some of our points that we cover, so I wanted to, the, uh, some of the, re, some of the um, physical reactions that you can have in this whole situation, there's physical signs and symptoms of fear that actually you get into, you can get, diff, you can have difficulty breathing. You can, you know, your, your heart races, your blood pressure goes up, your, um, you get chest pains, you know, trembling, shaking, these kinds of things. Your stomach churns, hot and cold flashes, sweating, these kinds of things all are physical reactions from your emotional state and, and, your, and can your, your body is now dealing with your emotions and reacting to your emotions rather physical. Yeah, when I, was, when I taught school right out of college, uh, I was in a social, what's called a social adjustment school uh, where you, the kids had been to juvenile detention and then came back to the school system. And I had a kid I remember distinctly who was very small. He was, he was my size and the other kids weren't. And uh, when he started to get uh, emotionally, when he started to get angry or feel threatened, his eyes would close so he couldn't fight. And that was his defense mechanism for being a small person. The, the ostrich didn't. sticking their head in the sand. He didn't dare. Everyone could see that his eyes were closing. And you, you just, it was such a, a point of view change. It was such a state change for anybody looking at him that what are you going to do? Hit a guy with his eyes closed? But it seems to me what you were saying, Andy, is that if you're in this emotional thing and all of these physiological um, side effects are happening, um, you're not in a state to recognize that you're that this is going on. You're in that fight or flight. That's and it right. seems to me that it you're still back to the other person saying, I can see that you're in crisis, and so they're hitting you with logic again, and we're back to the same thing of going, well, that may not be the right thing. Right, right, exactly. Um, um, a really good example of the logic issue uh, comes from the book Verbal Judo and the gentleman who wrote it is um, a negotiator for I think a police department in LA or he was at one point in time and he's called in to um, assist with a situation where a gentleman is in the bathtub with a toaster and he's trying to commit suicide and obviously the, the gentleman is very upset He's not thinking logically and so on and so forth. So the author walks into the bathroom and sits down next to the bathtub with the gentleman and starts telling him how death by electrocution is absolutely horrible and it takes forever and, and it's just, it's painful and it doesn't always work and you're left with different scarring and all this other stuff. And it's so much easier if he just takes a bunch of pills. And so he's having this big long conversation with this guy about better ways to kill himself. And the guy starts to calm down and he starts to engage in actual thinking 
and so on and so forth. It also buys the police time to go find the power box so that they can disconnect all of the electricity and save the man's life. But it engages on the level that the person is at. So if they're not being logical, engage in conversation that is sometimes just as illogical as you might think they are being, allows to, to stop that pattern of um, saying to them, well, you're not speaking logically right now, or it doesn't make sense, or how could you have heard that? Right, sounds like a brain scrambling, almost a hypnotic thing. Um, yeah. Uh, are you going to? Are you covering anything like uh, transactional analysis? No, we're not going to get into that level of detail on, okay. on stuff. We try and keep it at a higher level to everybody. Okay. So I'm going to move into our our slide because that kind of starts getting into some of the conversation about how do we deal with this? Where are we? So we we come and this is uh, Susan Meister for our thing is. Uh, communication ICU, intervention control and understanding. And so what Sue was just talking about is a method of interventions, you know, getting, starting, kind of slowing down the spiral that's going on in the situation and and things like that. So you're, you know, really the first, there's three components that to get, getting in, getting out of a loaded conversation. And the first one is, for us is intervention. Somebody, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about somebody uh, in the in the conflict has to recognize that you're in this spiral and 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 break out of it. Because as long as each of you are reacting to each other, you're just going to keep going down the spiral, and it's just going to get worse right. um, and 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 explode to a point which you know, and depending on the people involved, um, it can get very you know. For people who have anger issues, it can get physical if, if need be. Um, but at the same time, uh, and an intervention. So the direction. So then, so that becomes uh, a key thing: is somebody breaking the spiral. And sometimes that breaking the spiral, especially for somebody who has an anger problem. I have an anger problem, and and I don't get I. Very, very rarely get physical, but it, it just I get I get extremely angry. And my the recommendation from anger management education is remove yourself from the situation before somebody does get hurt. So that for the longest time was my break the spiral method was to to remove myself from the situation. Go in my room. Uh, literally lock my door so that, you know, I'll actually, even before Sue, my ex-wife would follow me because they, my ex-wife, this was one of the reasons I won't, both my ex-wife and Sue were people that want to resolve things. They don't, you, you can't leave anything unresolved. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm doing the flight thing, removing myself from the situation to protect us both, and they're going, but I need this resolved, so they're chasing me. Yeah, we have this. Um, so I, my, part of my break the cycle was to remove myself from the situation. The problem for Sue, and I'll let Sue explain what that does to her. Um, well, for me, it, <laughs> if you go away long enough, you'll figure out that I'm absolutely bonkers and you don't want to be with me anymore, so you're going to come back and break up and I'm not going to have a chance to make it better and I'm going to lose something I, I like. Well, sometimes I love lots. Um, so I was, we've had to recognize that I need validation that it's going to be okay. And a fight doesn't mean it's over. Um, so we've had, through conversations and things like that, we've put little things in place, like I give the space knowing 
and that we're going to come back to the conversation at a later time. And I'm going to have an opportunity to say whatever it is that I need to say, as long as it's not the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and we aren't going to break up in a fight. We actually have a breakup plan, um, which has really helped me feel a lot more safe. So the kind of the, the, the comment, note in the intervention, space needs to be made safe for all involved. I need to be safe by removing myself from the situation. Sue needs to be safe by knowing that I'm not leaving her right now and won't leave her tomorrow and that we will take the time to have a conversation about this situation and that it's just not going to get swept under the rug or what or whatever, that we're actually going to work to resolve this. Mm -hmm. So we both need to make, so we had to put things in our relationship to recognize the type of people we are and what things makes us safe. And my issue, which is a little bit different, was that I needed it, I needed closure now. And because it was painful to have the upset laugh while he walked off into the other room to calm down. And um, and I, it was like, okay, so we can have this over in 10 minutes or I can wait 30 minutes uh, and that those 30 minutes were hell. So I chased him into the other room, um, not, out of, not out of any, um, anything other than I just want this done. I want, you know, I want this, the air cleared. And I never recognized that he, well, I suppose I did. Because if I pushed, I got, I got dragon back. I, you know, I, I got, I got bit. But I, I don't think I ever recognized in those years that I was chasing him down for that quick, uh, conflict resolution that it was not effective that it I, I couldn't stop you were working on your needs yeah you were addressing your needs not understanding even if you even if, if in rational conversation you can sit here and say you understand his needs during rational conversation when you're in that emotional state, I couldn't stop. you don't see his needs anymore. You're only worrying about your needs because you're dealing with your inner fear. And so it's... Well, my, my view, <clears throat> by the way, in that instance is that it was best for our relationship that I not speak. I, I, become, I become very aggressive. And it was true. It was best for our relationship, but I couldn't not force the issue. Right. Yeah. It's, it's the, so, so even though the the motivations are different between Sue's needs and my needs, the fact was we both needed to have that immediate resolution, or something. or you know, or it could be a until until this is resolved, we can't go on back to normal. Right. And so, the sooner we get this resolved, which is where I'm coming from the sooner we can go back to normal. Yeah. Um, so, and I'd rather go back to normal, so let's get this resolved. You know, let's... <laughs> I don't work that way. Hmm? No, I don't work that way. I don't work that way. I don't work that way either, so, you know... Is, we, is that important that it's become an upset? I, I need to just calm down and work through it. Right. Uh, but, but everybody has different ways of how they have to work through it and how they can you know, um, back to the physiological, while you're having those physiological reactions, the chance that you're going to be able to sit and actually have rational conversation is very slim. And it can take up to an hour from the time the conflict stops without any further enhancement of that, of that conversation. It can take up to an hour for those physical, physiological res, uh, re results to calm down. Yeah. It seems to me 
that while you guys <laughs> are going off and calming down, I'm sitting here. Cuban. And an hour later, I'm not going to be any better. I mean, you're going. It's true. <laughs> yeah. No. So we have we have opposing needs. How do we address each person's needs? Right, and that's that's where with Sue and I we looked seriously and and had to dig. You come back to the not understand. You know, you uh, look at the bag. You talk about the baggage. You know, your some of those come from your how you were raised, how you you know how you dealt with arguments and his and how your family dealt with arguments and how you and all of this that you were when you were raised, and so you may have to dig to find what it is you really need to make you comfortable and feel in a safe place. You may have to go back into what you may, you know, your past arguments or your past relationships to figure out what it is that you need to make you comfortable that can be a compromise between the two of you because you can't just did somebody? Yes, Diameter has a question. Go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. That's uh, Dragon. Dragon Oh, he's he's with us. Oh, go ahead, Dra uh, Brian. Go ahead. Okay, I finally figured it. Okay, that's it. I did not work. Is that better? Thank you, sir. Kill one of the mute one of. <laughs> It's not my computer. Mute the other one. Okay, what did I do? I don't know what I did. I'm locked in life, I think. Is that why? Oh, that's why. Okay. Better. Give me uh yeah. Here, let's uh get rid of one. Okay. All right, okay. Let's see. Um Okay, Brian, you're up. What you're saying is very important. Well, go. Uh, we do want to. You, you yeah, had to go ahead, Brian. I can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, I can't hear you guys very well, but let's see if I can just. Uh, uh, there's a camera. They can see. No, they can't see us. I don't think. No. <laughs> you can hear everything we're saying, can't you? <laughs> okay. I apologize for the poor. Oh God, this is terrible. Here, you guys continue while we try and figure this out. I think I know what's wrong. We're logged in twice. Yes. Three times. Three times, actually. Okay. okay. Let us know when you're back, Brian. Uh, maybe take here. Let's clear his hand, and I don't know how. Can we do that? Uh, he can. No, only he can clear his hand. Okay. So. And I don't see a hand. Okay, Sue, did you want to join in? I know we've been having a lot of conversation on this end. Did you want to make any comments? Yeah. Um, I want to put my standard disclaimer of tired slave is stupid slave. So, um, because, sir, you're brilliant. Sometimes I think you are and you don't realize it. Jen, darling, this is... This is what my master taught me to do in those times. I'm not allowed to talk to him, but I can write or I can video or I can record it and I can say whatever it is that I want to say and I can let it flow and I can call him every name in the book and it can be awesome and the only part of it that he will listen to is the important point I'm trying to make. How do you get to it? By ranting. So by going, you... by writing, by letting it out, by just venting and venting and venting and venting, not to him. And then it just comes out of what the issue is, what I'm trying to say. And then I can go back to him and say, this, this is what's important to me. This is what's bothering me. That's what I do. That's what I do. I, I wrote, I actually uh, wrote on average for the first um, two years of our relationship, I, on uh, the two years together, I wrote about 130,000 words. That's, that's how he gets to, he gets through and, um, 
and clarifies his needs. And, uh, and my needs are, I need this done. I need this over. I don't want this to last any longer. I want, right. I want, um, I want flowers and happiness again. Right. And, and waiting the 30 minutes for the day or two for him to process is torture. But the, but the problem is, is if you try to drill down into, oh, yeah. you'll never get in, in no, no. especially in the emotional time, yeah. you'll never actually get to the root cause. So you're, and that's where, again, the writing process, there's a number of times that Sue will go off the vent and write in her, and by the time she's done writing, the issue is, becomes a non-issue, is almost a non-issue. Um, that's every time. There's, there's times when we still need to discuss it. But during that period of time, for me, part of the cool down process allows me to think rationally. And and with Sue, her doing her writing allows her to rash, get, become rational mm -hmm. and also in some cases drill into what is what is the root cause. Yeah. And the piece that you're missing in, in it, Jen, is um, set up a routine or a ritual of how you guys are going to come back to it. And it's going to be something pleasant. So even though Bob's taking his half hour or two days or, or whatever it is, when you guys talk about it, it's going to be over one of your wonderful dinners. And, and, it, and it's, it's going to be life as usual. And phase one is over, which is the, the initial confrontation. And phase two is the conversation between two very rational adults who love each other discussing how to go forward, the same way you guys would talk about your grocery list. And what, what was always interesting and frustrating was that after he had this time to write his whatever he needed to write and work through what he needed to work through, uh, more times than not, there, there was a non-issue and I'd sit down and say, okay, are we ready to talk about this? And he'd say, oh, I have no more problem. Right. And I'm still, You're still in problem. You're right. And so, um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm talking to the, to the calm, you know, I've got the calm voice going. Yeah. And, and he says, oh, there's not a problem at all. And I'm like, okay, whatever that's that stuff. Right. So, and so you're still, you're still in emotional, you're still emotional. Because there's no, there, in my side, there hasn't been a resolution. I've been waiting so, for him. And he's resolved it all on his own. And so that kind of goes with the control thing is, so he's gotten, gotten into control over his, emotions you're still you're still emotional and you're so so crazy still in your relationship at that point in time yeah crazy still in control of your relationship and you know that's as as sue said the you know, raven's comment about being in a polyamorous relationship with crazy mm -hmm. yeah not a good relationship no. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wrong partner in a polyamorous relationship brian go ahead is this better yeah, that's much you, better. Perfect. Oh, great. I apologize for all of that. Um, you've actually helped Unc and I right now understand, or myself more so, a little bit about our relationship and how over the past two years, as we've been trying to develop our relationship, there's been times where there's been some tough times or a struggle where Unka has walked, in my eyes, has walked away but needed time, three or four or five days, to process what has happened, um, understand what's happened, share it with me, and then me, what's that word you use, a just confession, a confession, that she confesses to me what um, she's been feeling, and all I have to do is understand it, not fix it, but just understand it and repeat it, that I, I hear what you're feeling or what you're confessing, and that's great, and we've, we've resolved her. We just realized now, or I did, that I wasn't resolved. Each uh, time that she left, or I, I saw her leaving, 
I didn't see her leaving to go fix a problem or go to fix something. I saw her leaving the relationship. Yeah. So for me, it was like, hey, this isn't going to work. You know, I'm, I, you know, I'm putting all my trust in someone here, and then they just walk away. And then they want to come back into my life right where we left off. No, right. we've got to start all over again from the beginning because I've lost faith in you now. And so we've yeah. had some real battles with that. And so just now, listening to this conversation, it's helped me to realize that I've haven't, we've dealt with her um, it, I'll say issue, not the right word here, uh, but we haven't realized that I was triggered in her leaving and that I needed some resolve. So exactly what you were just saying about having a protocol for breaking up would be a protocol here for her possibly within our relationship to that I need a few days or a little bit of time to figure myself out I'm in a crazy mode right now. Then I know she's not leaving the relationship. No. We, our, our protocol in our, in, in our relationship is that from the point in which in, if Sue asks to leave the relationship or even if I'm emotional and I'm saying we won't make a decision about ending the, the relationship for seven days, we'll act, and that will give us the time to, to become the, um, we also have um, our, uh, we also have another one. But we have, um, so we have this protocol that says we won't actually make a decision on the ending of the relationship or breaking, changing of the dynamic, changing our dynamic or whatever we're going to do for seven days, which gives us time to get to a rational state and, and actually think about what's going on and, and work through our issues. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on there is you're very right about the wanting to solve it. There's some of us who are fixers. And so when our partner is laying their heart on the table and telling us what's wrong, they're not necessarily looking for us to solve their problem. They just want us to understand and listen. And meanwhile, we've already gone into resolution mode and we're already looking for the solution. And that can drive our partners absolutely crazy and, and cause their spiral to go, just keep going. Uh, because that's not what they're looking for. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that because this is something that Anka found kind of on her own in a way that, with, and with my help I guess, that she needed time just to work through it and then once she worked through it was to share it or, or as she said, confess it to me and again, I didn't need to fix it, I just need to acknowledge, that's what I was looking for, I just right. need to acknowledge what she was feeling and what she went through, that's it. And we're talking in minutes to an hour three days worth of stress are gone quickly. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, um, I just want to kind of jump in for a minute. Um, I think it's a, a, a common problem that comes up sometimes in, in a lot of relationships is how quickly people move through different things. Um, I know like just last February, we had a situation where I stormed into my room, slammed the door hard enough that I knocked the pictures off the wall. I was so furious. And 10 minutes later, I was back in the living room at Andy's feet explaining to him what I had done wrong, why it was wrong, and what I really wanted to convey to him, and, and going through my, my confession um, stage of things. In, in a span of 10 minutes, um, three, well, five, six years ago, it took Andy a week to process things. And then we got it down to four days. And now we're to overnight. So we're, we're getting there. There's progress happening. Right. Uh, but w there is that when, you're, when your partner is very quick in resolving something and you're not as quick. and and this, I, I, I love this stuff. I'm, I'm passionate about what we're, we're saying here, but just to give you a hint of what's down the line is you master this stuff and, and then you get in an argument and your partner is yelling at you and you look at them and you say, you know what, you're right. That's a whole new argument because they then have all of those emotions that are still lingering there and you're validating them. You're telling them, yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. And, and that's just a whole different loaded conversation. But that's, 
we have coming down the line. Or, well, and actually what happens in, in that scenario is because we've, we've actually just recently had that in the last week we've gone through that is, yeah, I, I, you're right, I'm wrong, but the other person still wants to vent. They've got to finish. It was me. I was I was the one venting. As Sue said, yeah, you're right. I did this wrong. I, and I wasn't finished laying it out on the table. I hadn't laid all laying. I had my whole I had let all this baggage I needed to let out on the table, and it it, right. it wasn't out there yet. So right. I wasn't wait. I, I wasn't ready to stop. Right. <laughs> so um, so getting you know it it's giving. So that comes into you know comes back to the the control and and. So we talk about gaining control and and working to figure out how best to get control. And then understanding and, and finding tools. And we have got better over the years where we now, the two of us have worked where, yeah, we can we can work through our scenarios. Sometimes sometimes the argument starts and we don't even leave the room. And it's it's ten minutes later we go, Oh yeah, that was you know, it's it's really made a difference in the number of arguments we've had in our relationship and the uh, and the intensity. So um, we have another hand from. Well, I want to make sure Brian was here. done and, and okay. Ask Brian, were you done? Brian, did you have anything else? Hearing nothing. I apologize. We were talking, and I thought, I'm sorry. We we were just discussing how Anka, what for her it was taking the time that she needed to figure out what she was feeling. Yes. Did you want to explain how you said that? Mm, I'm Moses Bull. You're Moses. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to explain that in two seconds here. She was chewing on something. <laughs> Dinner time there. <laughs> right. Because I wasn't used to really paying attention to my emotions. So um, I've learned to be much more perceptive of them. And then once I'm able to identify them, and then I can share them, the case is basically solved. But she needed to be away from me in a calm environment, I'm assuming, so that that could happen. And oh, we lost something. And your feedback has been given to another kind of possibility of feedback. Right. How much do you think personality types of introvert versus extrovert play into the loaded conversation style? She goes on to say, I think it's. Yes, I'm very much an introvert, and so I, I, um, uh, even though I'm, I'm very much out there in our community and and things like that. I like my time to by myself, and and I like to just think through things by myself, and so that's uh, that's. So it could be a personality issue. Very much the need to to. Fix it now and the need to sort of wait. Right. Well, my own life experience has said that if I do it quickly, it's probably wrong. So I don't want to do anything quickly because that seems to me to work against my own best interest. Uh, I need to sit back and work it. And I also don't work very well. I don't work well auditorially. So when somebody is saying things to me, I don't take it in. I can't process it quickly. So my work style is to write it out and it all takes time. So if you have an introvert and an extrovert issue in the in the spiral of a communication upset, mm -hmm. um, you're still back to the same tools that you're giving us. Yes, you're still back to working through how you can. Well, it's in a lot of cases separating because I'm not I'm not a psychologist or anything like that, but I think. In a lot of cases, you'll actually find that the it's the introvert that'll have the anger issue because they're they're keeping it in, oh. and they're it's when they they explode because it's just built up. It's built it may up. May not be that they're exploding over this issue. But oh no! No, over. they've got baggage that they've built up, where an extrovert is more likely to let it out as things happen type thing. In my mind, I, that's my my opinion. I don't know. If, um, I have an opinion. You have an opinion? Okay. The slave has the anger issue. Oh, yes. This is this is actually a, a we I, we learned this in our relationship. So, for I'll let I'll let Sue do the explanation yes. though. I had no anger issue 
in my life until he put a collar on me. Then I don't know where that anger came from. So that's not true. I do. Um, lack of control. I don't think it has anything to do with being an introvert or an extrovert. I think it has a lot more to do with who feels in control and who, um, and who feels out of, like, that they don't have control. And for me, it was, I'm in a, in a situation where I'm struggling with myself between what do I want to say and what do I want to be. And, and that, um, that power struggle within myself. And um, I think I'm an extrovert type of person. And outside of my relationship, I have no problem speaking my mind and I have no problems expressing my anger in a respectful way. Um, within the relationship, I have no clue how to express my anger. The, um, just for people's information, part of uh, Susan and my history, We've been together for 10 years. For the first six and a half years of that of our relationship, she was my master, and I've been her master for the last, for the rest of our relationship. So we've actually seen it from both sides, and I've had a lot less of an anger issue now that I'm in control. But Sue didn't have an anger issue in the first six and a half years, and it magically appeared. Hmm. When when she really, surrendered to really me. A great so point. both of you experienced more anger on the S side. Yes. Yeah, you know, actually, I, I completely agree, agree with Sue, and that's an enlightening point. And I'll be sure to footnote you, but you're also surely to end up in the next uh, in the master slave advanced book. The issue is uh, the explosion reveals how you see you are as opposed to how you wish to be. Oh, I like that. Oh. May I share? Something Unk and I just, just said almost at the same time was that when Sue shared with us that she uh, had the collar on and that the anger came out, it was like we kind of looked at each other and it was like, well, she felt safe. She felt in a safe place or safe position that she could share that anger and allow it to go out and not be, say, um, um, put down for it. Something along those lines that what we felt right away is possibly that, you know, she, was, she felt with the caller on that she was in a safe place that she could express that anger now. Uh, the, actually, in our case, it's um, usually the anger came out when you had concerns that your master wasn't actually in control or, or understanding the situation to be able to make an appropriate decision. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the, your, your, at risk because yes. you're not feeling safe because you're not being protected and you don't have the ability to protect yourself is what we is our analysis that we've had. Um, so um, I wanted to before we go too far. Um, I don't the Iraq uh, had their hand up and then took it down. Did you want to? Uh. Yes. <laughs> go ahead, Master Iraq. First, I have to find out, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, good. Okay, great. Um, I, I want to take this on a slightly uh, uh, angled thread. Um, my lovely girl, Thalia, or uh, my puppy bear, as I should call her, um, is in a very, very stressful period of her life. We do not live together. She has a, a domestic life separate from me. And it is um, uh, going through some high degree of stress. I am the kind of person who listens very carefully and, and for instance, I will often say, uh, what was that? When I see something, even a, just a, a, an odd look or a reaction to something I've said or something we see on TV or whatever. And uh, she usually, uh, I won't go so far as to say automatically, but nevertheless, we'll just sort of shake her head and, and you know, uh, say, let's move on. She isn't used to releasing or allowing uh, the emotional stress out. And I am a digger. I go for it because I believe very strongly that though it may not resolve things, 
expressing it is helpful. But this is still a problem between us. I will point things out. I will say, but you said this. I feel this. This is what I feel from you. This is what I hear. Uh, something is going on. Tell me what it is. I want her to expose herself to me, to be vulnerable to me. I think or know pretty well that I, it's not going to bother me. It's not that sharing on a deeply emotional level is exceedingly important and I believe broadens and deepens the relationship. But she still is at a place where she stays quiet and shakes her head. Well, um, I so. Well, that doesn't help me. <laughs> I, I, I empathize with her. Uh, the fact of the matter is, you're going to get a, a black a blank wall. The um, and I don't know from my my history. Um, you know, if I go back in my life. Experience, uh, releasing my feelings and letting my feelings be known when I was a kid was not beneficial. Usually it was, um, it was not a positive result. So it was better just to keep it in and not release it, not tell anybody what it was. And so um, I know that's why I don't express my emotions to the same level uh, that I do. Um, yeah, we'll get, Oh, we got a few people. <laughs> do, you feel that, do you feel that's a healthy response? Do you feel that it is better for your relationship to keep these things private and to yourself? Well, I'll tell you, I've had a lot of therapy in my life. Uh, and uh, a lot of what I'm uh, wrestling with uh, is reliving uh, past experiences uh, where I, I will even admit that uh, rationally the other person didn't even uh, uh, Take it the way I am. I I have interpreted it. I've created a false reality. So the issue for me is getting rid of the false reality and false memories. And there's no point in bringing them up and laying them at master's uh, feet because uh, they uh, they're generally irrational in the first place. Uh, I've just never seen any point a point to it. I I prefer to just beat them down myself. They're not they're not really germane to our relationship. Uh, they're just annoying, and I will frequently react. I'll have a reaction uh, in the present time to something that may have happened uh, 30 or 40 years ago, or even 10 years ago, uh, that will cause a head twitch. And she says, what is it? And I'm saying, Not, nothing. It's just unrelated to who we are as a couple. However, I think that it would be wrong not to notice it. She's welcome to notice so, it, and if it's at all relevant, I'll talk about it. Right. But some of these things are just, they're just nutty, and they happen when I was, in my family life when I was a kid. And they, they just always haunted me, and they, they still do. Well, I, you know, I'm saying like if a rock squirrel um, has a face or something, um, either that face is asking for his attention, or she is working on something in her own mind. And so if, if he doesn't notice, you know, it could be a cry out for notice, but if he notices and she says, you know, I don't want to talk about it, then it could just be that what you're going through. She's working through something in her own mind. Yeah, the other, the other, the other things and not to evaluate any, you make any assumptions about the position of your relationship or anything like that, but Probably for somebody that's been through that in their life, to get to a point in which they can release and let that out is going to take a long building of trust, and 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 it and it's and it's going to take a lot of getting to trust the relationship they're in and know that they can. I know I can say things to Sue now within our relationship because that I've never been able to say to anybody else. But that's uh, that's. That's a building of trust in our relationship, and uh, and that's taken a lot of years to get. It takes a lot of years to get there. It's not something, and not, and I think, and we've lived lived together for those ten years. We've been in the same household for ten years, um, and that so it it it's a long it's a long hard road to get past the baggage from previous relationships or.
Brian, I recognize that you had your hand up first. Ursula hand up. Why don't you have something yet? So may we call on them first? I'm Go trying. ahead, Nikita or Ursula. Yeah, okay. We got thank you for coming. Um, yeah, well, hearing people's discussion here about the communication back and forth brought me back to remembering. Nikita? Ursula? Hello, well, hello. In pause. Am I, I not there? I Hi there. It's, it's Ursula here. Um, I was just going to say that I had a very, very long history of not sharing my feelings at all about anything. And I don't um, remember hot. So I don't guess the, Can you see us moving? Oh, oh, there we go. There's uh, Nikki. Oh, hello. It's Ursula. Hi. Hello. Did you guys hear me before? No. Oh, I guess we lost you. Sorry. Anyway, I had a really long history of not sharing my feelings at all. Um, so when Nikita and I first got together, she started to work on me, and it took a long time. But eventually, it got to the point where I was able to share things with her, and she does. She notices my looks, um, whatever they happen to be. And sometimes it is just me thinking about something. And I can tell her that now, and she knows that that's true, and, and it's not a big deal. But at other times, it is something that I'd like to talk about, but I'm not quite sure how to bring it up because it's an uncomfortable subject. But when she notices it, I, I have an opening to talk about it. Well, that's, that's we're only seeing. Oh. Yeah, we lost Ursula, go back a little bit. Yeah, we. we... She, sees, she sees your face and asks. Oh, and she asks. And then I have an opening to talk about it because it may be an uncomfortable topic that I'm not quite sure how to bring up. Um, but when she asks, I have to tell her because it's important to me. Okay. I think we're maybe uncomfortable. We're frozen again. So okay, I I, I think you know. we're having a few technical issues, and we're actually. Oh. I'm I'm not having the technical issues you guys are having. So I've heard what Ursula has said. So you guys can sort out your technical, and we can just chit chat. You 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 go ahead and react, and we'll see what's going on. And we're well, actually you've probably heard it like five times now. <laughs> oh yeah, I could probably video. recite it. Somebody take control. Okay, the little letter type is taking control. That's it. That's all. <laughs> yeah, um, I I think that like it is that opening of the door sometimes, and I think the other thing when it comes to. Opening up to somebody is a universal sign of trust. And when that's not happening in the relationship for whatever reason, there's that little tweak in your brain that goes, they don't trust me. And that sends a whole different spiral going. Um, and so I think there's other ways to look for trust and to build trust. And uh, I think it can happen quickly. I, Yes, Andy and I have been together for a very long time, but the trust that we have between us to the level that we have has been three years. Because um, there was a lot of things that happened that tore down trust before then. And um, and it's just, it, yeah, yeah, that's my thoughts. I also wanted to say, I, I know it's um, 10 o'clock or, Thereafter, there was a question that was posted that I want to touch on at some point in time. I don't know if the video is still frozen. It looks like it is. No, we, we can hear you. Go, go ahead. We're just not moving much. I know. Or... Well, I wanted to say uh, something about what Sue just said. So, so you have this look that says, okay, there's something going on. And you, you go to the whoever person that gave that look and you say, what's going on? And when they are not willing to share because perhaps they don't feel safe in sharing, then the person that they're not sharing with also is now, it, from, from what Can be you pointed out, it, is saying, what, you don't trust me enough to share. And so now we, we, we now have start, another... You start a new spiral. I mean, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's very easy to get to start a spiral. It, okay. It, if I may... Yes. Excellent. Good. So, yeah, on the topic like we have here about the communication and feeling safe about it, it's. I think I read in one of my very 
uh, respected author's books there about the three levels of communication, being an adult, child, or parent mode. And if one of us is a child, the other one's an adult, we're never going to get anywhere. So in, in order for us to be safe and to be able to speak about items and all topics and subjects and whatnot, we need to be at the same level of whether the emotions are high or low or that speaking level where the other person will listen. One of us has to come up and down or they both have to adjust to find a, a happy medium in order to be able to be heard. Right. Yeah, that's, that's the issue that if one of you is in, e in an emotional state, uh, in transactional analysis, that's called child, uh, ch you're speaking with your child voice. If the other person responds with scolding and admonitions, that's called parent voice. So if the, if the person in child voice hears parent voice, you'll re-trigger child voice. Should these. Should these, yeah, should these. So the, one or the other of you has to be aware of what's going on enough to pull yourself into what's called adult voice. So you know what I'm talking about, Bob. Yeah, I've, I've heard something about it. I read that somewhere. Yeah, yeah there's a book. Yeah, Master yeah. Slate, something or other. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell knows? Well, and that is very close to Coke's question about um, what is effective in returning the tone to a constructive, connected one. All right. Thank you for joining us, Cokes. Good to see you. I hadn't said anything earlier, but thank you for joining us, and thanks for your comment. And I know I owe you a phone call. The so, okay, I've got. Oh, let, go ahead, Sue. I've got that one. Okay. Um, because that's actually something that we we touch on in our workshop. Uh, so that you want to use intervention type statements is is what they're called, and um, let me just go back here. An intervention statement. Um, ah, man. Ugh. Hi, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. I'll give you some examples <laughs> of some intervention statements. Of things like, it seems like we are on different pages. I would like to understand your page. I am emotional right now and need to regain control of that before I can continue in this conversation. Can we come back to this in however long? I don't think I am understanding what you are saying. Can you help me understand? I want to give you my full attention and I am too angry, confused, tired, etc. to do that right now. Can we come back to this at a later time? Okay. Wow, we are coming at this very, from very different points of view. Let's work together to bring these two views together. She's looking for our book. That's why. It what what what's that from? Sorry. Sorry? What's what what is that from? Um, that is from our workshop. Those are examples that we give. Is that is that a book or is that That's your own, our own material? material? Okay. Yeah, it's actually our it's actually our notes from our from our presentation. Okay. It's that we she's re referring to. Uh, my my initial comment that I mumbled over here to Master Andy is that that's all master speak. How do you deal with it if master's upset and, and slave wants to call a timeout? I don't understand. Uh, all of those statements are master statements. None of them are slave statements. Slave, slave doesn't have the authority to speak like that to master. Why not? Nah, not the <laughs> way I ran a relationship, they didn't. It depends I, on the relationship and our relationship. I think from the slave point of view, it can be very easily changed into, sir, I'm not understanding the direction you're giving me. Sir, I'm trying very difficult, or I'm trying to, okay. um, or I want to be um, the best okay. slave I can be, and I'm not understanding the directions, I'm not understanding what you're saying to me. Okay. Sir, I'm trying to align myself to your point of view, but I'm having a hard time following what you're saying. Great, good, thank you. That's very helpful, thank you. Um, Brian, still has a hand up after everybody yes, else. Yes, 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 just on that note there, that was perfect, is that what I just said to Anka is, my partner or submissive or slave, whichever the case may be, they can talk and speak to me at any point in time about anything. 
they only have to do it one way, with respect. As long as they do it with respect and in a respectful manner, I will always bite my tongue and listen and make a decision from there where to go with things or how to deal with things. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Anything else? You're at you're 10 after, so you're yeah. probably yeah. pretty Thank close to so wrapping up. Sue, do you have anything you want to say as, from a wrap-up point of view? Uh, any additional notes or anything that we want to? Clearly, we need to have you over again to do part two of this. <laughs> <laughs> Can I come this time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, Ursula, do you want to lead one of these? We're, we're booked up until the... We're, we, we've got oh, scheduled until the second. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're open on the fourth weekend, of the, the, the fourth Tuesday of January on. So if anybody wants to chair one of these, we'd sure be glad to pick this discussion up. The, Sue, did you have, I was just going to say, did you have any other conversation you wanted to add, add to this at the close? Um, yeah, at the, in the chat, I had put up my email address if anybody would like our handouts. Um, from this, I, that's fine. I, I can email them to you. I'll put up my email address again on chat, and then if anybody wants them, I'll email them out. Sure. Actually, and I'm serious. If you're willing to share these um, uh, uh, various intervention strategies, I'm uh, very happy to cite you um, in the, the Master Slave Relations Advanced Book. Uh, and that's the one I'm working on right now. Uh, so, so if you and Andy discuss it and uh, would like to be cited, I'd be very, uh, I'd love to put it in. It's good material. Whatever he says. <laughs> okay. Such a right answer. <laughs> Such right. Anybody else? If I may, oh, I just want to say thank you very much. This was probably one of the best sessions we've had that really had a good, just a good overall uh, information and, and uh, has helped us realize something too, has been very beneficial. Thank you. Thank you very much. What did we not hit on that we absolutely have to hit on before we close the night? And I think overall we've hit most of the points of our, of the presentation without, you know, getting into it all. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I just want to really quickly kind of say, like, when you get into these really intense things, if you can remember ICU, intervention, control, and understanding. Stop the spiral, gain control, and do it with understanding. The, the goal is to understand each other, the situation where you're going. And it, it will get you out of them almost every time. Um, we developed this from business practices, uh, as well as leadership techniques, as well as understanding um, how emotions work. And this is our technique, and we have seen it work with our friends. We've taught it to them and just seen it in action. So just I see you, intervention, control, and understanding. I'm done my soapbox. The, the two things that I'd like to pick up on uh, either privately or for another um, webinar is uh, the discussion of how to have a breakup plan, what goes into a breakup plan, and uh, rituals of returning to uh, peace, because those are all functions of uh, different kinds of relationship uh, structures, and I'd love to have some group, uh, inter group interaction, interaction with, with those topics. Uh, those are very interesting to me. Uh, I'd like to sort of end um, in, in, the, in the same discussion of have a breakup plan. Uh, I'd like to, uh, I don't want to, I'm not going to name any names here, but something has come up within a community somewhere in the United States um, with uh, where uh, a, a person has uh, died. Uh, and the person uh, was a, uh, a female leather master, uh, owner of a slave, uh, with some, uh, with a lot of stature in their local community. And the, uh, upon the person's, upon her death, it, it was discovered that uh, there were, uh, that there were no financial preparations at all made for the slave. Uh, and in fact, the slave is um, uh, destitute. 
uh, with uh, a uh, with a uh, master who died midlife, uh, with uh, uh, really no warning. She went from hospital to very sick to dead. Uh, and uh, I, I'd like to. Uh, and uh, there was there was nothing. For, although there there had been some initial discussions about transferring slave to to another master, uh, those discussions had never really developed. And uh, you've got a, a really traumatic situation taking place right now. Uh, and I, that's uh, these are topics. I'd, I wonder if we could uh, bring them up, uh, work them through, and get. Uh, I have some other people I would invite onto that and plan this uh, into the January, February period. So you're talking about um, uh, finding your exit strategy Find, yeah. and then plan preparing yes. for um, unexpected events. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to end on a negative note, but these uh, I do. I would like to. Real time topics. These are real time topics. Uh, I'm on the phone trying to calm the uh, one of the people down this. Really involved with this right now, uh, so um, uh, but these are topics that are that are really they're, they're you give a lot of lip service to yes have a uh, have a living will have a uh, have money set aside for slave, um, but what if that hadn't really ever happened? Right in in our case we we specifically we got married this year to address that. Right, but well, they that were married. They were married, but there wasn't enough money or anything there to do it. So they had done. This. They had a slave life and they had a married life. And part of the slave life was there was supposed to be a set aside, and and they didn't do it. Well, right. and I think that, um, granted, I don't know with what I speak, but I think that in the master-slave relationship. Uh, More need at the at the loss of a master. Yeah, I think this is I think this is a great topic that yeah. we don't have time to talk about tonight, right. Right. and that would be a good topic to have in a, in a future uh, right. webinar. Okay. So um, yeah. so uh, we want to thank you guys for being here tonight. Our video is frozen, but from what I understand from That's the chat, uh, yeah. uh, sound goes goes through even though the video is frozen. And um, yeah, sounds is fine, the rock says. And that, so we want to thank you guys for being here and oh, that's great. for the people coming into the conversation because yeah. that's what makes the conversation so rich. Yes, it was a great conversation. It was very, very good. Thank you all for coming. Really appreciate it. Thanks again, and we'll say good night. And wish everybody a very wish happy every, holiday. Happy holidays to everyone. We are dark the Tuesday before Christmas. Yep. So this is the last. This is the last uh, broadcast for this year. We'll see you. The uh, Nurse V actually is doing the presentation. Uh, yeah. She's left already. Nurse V is the um, uh, hosting uh, the uh, second um, Tuesday in January. Um, uh, and so that's it. We'll say good night and thanks again to Ava so very, very much uh, for uh, staying up and uh, bearing with us this evening. Yes. And with that, we're going to sign off. Do you need to capture the chat window? I will capture the chat window. Okay. And I can sign off on this end? Yes. Good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Good Miss seeing you. you. Miss you. Good night from Canada. <laughs> oh, who's in yeah. Canada? Well, Brian and Nanka. Oscar Dragon Z. Really? Where in Canada? Victoria. On the West Coast, baby. Oh, I'm sorry.